Welcome back. It's Tuesday. It's new comic with date. Let's run it. Batman White Knight presents Generation Joker. This is Sean Murphy's back verse, bringing you the goods from issue number two onwards. Christopher Priest has been doing Black Adam now for just over the last year, and issue 12 of 12 is finally here. They made it, people. They ran it all the way through. Good job. Well done, DC. Now, Archie's been running a series of horror-esque one-shots these last couple of years. This is Archie presents... The Chilling Adventures presents Camp Pickens. What that has in store for you, I've got no idea. But from the cover alone, it looks like at least, well, Betsy's not having a good time. It's all to go rough. Anyway, this is by far and away, I think, Comic of the Week, people. Well, I don't know. It might be. But it is Godzilla, Here There Be Dragons, which as far as I can work out, is Godzilla versus Pirates. What else do you need? There's a map, people. There's a map. There's a giant lizard. And there's a very, very down-on-his-luck dude who just looks like... He really, really needs to be in another adventure because he's going up against that bad boy. Get it, people. That's going to go very quickly. Okay, Hulk with hair. In, well, maybe. The Incredible Hulk is revamping, shall we say, just after Hulk had its annual number one out last week, which finished up the last run, which went for a very long time. I do love seeing longer runs in the modern Marvel verse. It's lovely. But The Incredible Hulk starts now. Philip Kennedy Johnson, I'm wisely told by the chief backstage, has just been writing Superman. Nick Klein, however, Nick Klein's been drawing all over the gaff these last couple of years and has a gorgeously murky horror-esque style, which for this, looks like it's covering that with a plum. That looks to be a dark, brooding Hulk number one. Let's see where that goes. Saga 65 is not particularly jumping on point or anything like that. I just wanted to spotlight the fact it got to 65 issues and it's still the same original creative team and their creative vision continues. It's very, very rare in the modern world of comics to see such a long running run continue. If they need to take a couple of years break in between to keep it running on smoothly, so be it. Long may that continue. Scarlet Witch has got an annual out this week, so it's not a new number one, folks, but it is a little succession of three short stories. If you wanted to just jump right in there in the middle, you absolutely can. Speaking of big guns, let's go. Star Wars The Mandalorian has been massive, I think it's fair to say at this point. It's very, very unwise to try and describe it as anything else. So season two is back now. If you missed your first chance, don't worry. The first season was basically an adaptation of the first show. So you can jump right in here for what I'm told is brand new Mandalorian goodies, which have as of yet unadapted by show. We shall see. Okay, here we go. One of the biggest ones Marvel has been building to for quite some time, up until Gods comes out. So this is going to be precursoring all of that. This is Jonathan Hickman. I know you're listening now. Jonathan Hickman and Brian Hitch bringing you Ultimate Invasion, which is... In some ways, the revitalization of the Ultimate Verse. Marvel have found a way to bring that back. And also, oh, Jonathan Hickman's vision. He has always been one for absolute madness. If you've ever read his Fantastic Four, you'll know exactly what I'm on about. If you've ever read his East or West, you know exactly more what I'm on about. Either way, there's not many talents in the modern writing scene who can rival that boy. And his design work, I personally love as well. We shall see where that goes. That's a big weighty issue. There's a lot of expectation on Marvel for this one. So I really want to see them knock that out of the park. Speaking of massive issues, here you come. Wonder Woman 800 is just bringing up, I'm going to move that down there, because the creative team on this book is massive. You've got Wonder Woman, I think that's Tom King starting from issue one, next issue. I'll have to check that, correct me if I'm wrong, people. Sorry. Uh, I think so. And this is going to segue into covers of notes slash covers of the week. I'm not calling this a cover of the week yet, some of you may disagree. This is the Brian Bolland cardstock lovely cover, which has got more than a whiff of Julia Roberts about it. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say that, her name is probably trademarked. Either way... Jury's out on that one here in House at a Place in Space Towers this week. Jury is out. So let me know what you think. However, jury is in on this one. We all really like that. That is the Daniel Sampierre variant, which is more foily than God. So if your screen is full of shine right now, I don't blame you. My eyes are. But that's lovely to see in the flesh. We've also got Lee Bermesia on the Batman Superman variant cover B. This is not anything special per se, but to me it is. This is just... We've been banging on now about Todd McFarlane's production values for a while. His costs are low. His production values and card stock is high. That is by Mr. Stevens there, and for some, it's just another cover. But the cover artwork and interior artwork quality on all things Spawn is just consistently great. I absolutely love it. So somebody say it's nothing special? Sure. But consistency, at least for me in comics, is absolutely critical. And when they're bringing out that level of quality on a consistent basis, woof, love it. At $2.99. At $2.99, Chief. Yes, indeed. There's, I don't think there's anyone else doing that on a regular basis in comics. But I'm going to go back to Mr. Patrick Gleason for the Incredible Hulk number one. I think that's called the Gamma Ray variant this week. I believe that was cover price as well, which it makes it a steal because that's just bloody cool. Anyway, I believe we're running a whatnot show right now. So if you want to tune into that, I think me and the Chief will be doing one on Saturday. There's probably one on Thursday as well. If you fancy yourself a bit of a niche gimmick show, that should be good. 
And as always, if you can, please do like, comment, share, and subscribe because it always helps us out. All that good jazz is always good. Love you all, and I will see you all very soon. I'm slowing at the end. Bye bye.